And I remember that was the first time that I was like, no, cabrón, ya no me la vuelves a hacer, chinga tu puta madre, ya, ya me harté. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 27. I am your host, Alanized, and this is Noche de Pendejadas. Para todas las pendejas allá en casita que se están preguntando qué chingados es esto, escuchen. Noche de Pendejadas is a weekly episodic show where I go ahead and bring your favorite influencers to chismear, have a cocktail, and see what the fuck they've been up to. So, si tú quieres ver a tu influencer favorito, hazme un favor and drop their usernames down below, porque a lo mejor te hago caso y te lo traigo la semana que viene. La semana la pasada les traje a un guest rete chingón and this week is no exception. Please help me welcome tonight's guest, Stacy Diaz. Yes. <laughs> hello, hello. Hi. This is what the second time we try to get you on here. La primera vez, you guys, me acuerdo, it was literally, we were already going to film the following day and I lagged on you like super fucking last minute. Perdóname, aquí no te lo te digo. Preocupes. But it's because I had really bad, you remember well, the last time I saw yeah, you yeah, had yeah. Gallstone um, problems. Que casualidad que the night before we were gonna freaking film, me had un pinche ataque, and I'm like, I cannot do this I shit. I know, but I don't take it personally because sickness is horrible. I understood. I was yeah. like, gracias a Dios me dijiste la noche antes. Y no el día. Y no me aliste, yeah. porque luego se me hubiera enojado. I know, dude. Honestly, I was like, oh my gosh, should I lag? Should I lag? I low key wanted to like suck it up. And it was funny too because I woke up and I was like, okay, I feel a little better, but no dormí nada. No. So yeah. iba a estar como pinche zombie en el pinche podcast. And I was like, mejor let's reschedule. Yeah. Y pues aquí la tenemos, you guys. Para todos allá en casita que a lo mejor no conocen a Stacy, I'm going to go ahead and send it over to her para que ella les diga un poquito más de quién es y qué hace. So, my name is Stacy Zapodaca and I guess a lot of people don't know this if you've never watched me before, but I grew up in Mexico up until I was 13. Oh, yeah, so soy de los Mochis Sinaloa. I always claim it. Everybody knows if you follow me. And I came here when I was 13. Now, I think something really kind of interesting like a view that I may have that a lot of people may not is because I come from Mexico I feel like in the U.S. I was like overwhelmed with the amount of opportunity that you have here to make something of yourself so when I was around 21 I started on Instagram actually at the time I was doing like workout videos I was doing CrossFit there wasn't a lot of people doing that I, that's how you know estoy vieja and um, I started getting a little bit of a following there and I probably did that for around four or five years and when I started YouTube four years ago is when things really started to take off for me. Mm -hmm. I feel like YouTube kind of gives you an opportunity to have a closer relationship with your followers rather than just like pictures and workout videos. And I went from doing fitness content to more lifestyle, right? Uh, two years ago, which I believe is when TikTok started, yes. right? Like two, two, three years ago during the pandemic. Right before the pandemic, I was doing TikTok a little bit. And if you scroll all the way back, which is not a challenge, don't scroll all the way back. You could see like the beginning of TikTok. And I genuinely feel like TikTok is the app that has allowed me to feel and talk about what I love to talk about, yeah. right? If you kind of had to like pan out, that's like my trajectory on social media. Yeah. And now I feel like there's different sections. Like TikTok is for one thing. YouTube is more personal. Instagram is just like like the outfit pig yeah yeah yeah, yeah 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 um but yeah that's kind of how I got my footprint on social media and now now I feel like I'm meeting all these like big influencers which like is you. crazy you know so yo apenas wild. te conocí literal hace dos semanas hace dos semanas <laughs> you guys we went to the Hemela Cosmetics launch party and ya estábamos siguiéndonos sí, because yeah. yo te empecé a seguir cuando pasó todo de tu boda que let me just tell really? you gorgeous wedding you know Thank a lot of people you. that I know Went to her wedding and I was like, let me, I, I was like stalking you, right? Like, I was like, okay, everyone's <laughs> posting about it. La sigui. And then I was like, wait a minute. I've seen her on my For You page, really? you know, <laughs> on it, on TikTok. But you know, sometimes when you're on your yeah, For yeah. You, you're just scrolling. You're like, hey, yeah. I love that video. But like, I don't know about y'all, but I don't like following people on TikTok because the moment I follow them, they stop coming out on yes, my For You page. Yes, that happens Is to that me too. Thing? So like, whenever I see people's content, like I'll never follow them. I'm like, no, porque en cuanto los sigo, voy a yes. perderlos on my For You page. Yes. So they see ye on Instagram and now we're here, you guys. Yay. So como se acaba de decir, how was it like growing up in Mexico? And how was the transition from living in Mexico to the U.S.? Oh, my God. Honestly, 
hard as hell. And let me tell you something. So I come from, so Mochis is a city, right? And a lot of the experiences of people who come from Mexico to here have a little bit of a different experience. So when I first came over here, like I didn't know English oh, shit. Uh -huh. at all. Like literal llegué así recién, recién llegada, no sabía nada de inglés. Eighth grade was my first year here. And kids are mean, yeah. especially in middle school. Like I come from a small city where everybody knows everybody and everybody's friendly with each yeah. other and things like that. And here it's very much different to the point where like you can live in a city yeah. and not know who your neighbors are, right? That's how it is here. So kids would make fun of me. I remember these two twins in eighth grade, like they tried to fight me and they were like saying things and I generally didn't even know what You're they like, were saying. You're like, están diciendo? Wait, yo ni, yo ni decía malas palabras. O sea, they were like, I don't even know what they were saying. Yeah. And then I was just like, I think they want to be my friends. <laughs> no. I mean, I could just tell they were trying to fight me because they were like, obviously being yeah. like aggressive and like stepping up to me. Y yo en mi vida había peleado, así, en mi vida. Um, and so that was kind of the experience. And of course, like people would make fun of me. Like one thing that I always think about, it's like they would be like, oh, what is that? Pointing at a tree. And then I'd be like, oh tree and then they'd be like what's two plus one and i'm like you fucking bitch so you came at 12 years old yeah that's middle school yeah i feel like it would have been different if you would have came sin hablar inglés like kindergarten right pues aprende, yes. you know what i mean but you came yeah when kids yeah they have their developed you know little um groups, attitudes and yeah. their groups and everything so i'm sure that was hard for you it was really hard like it was really hard to assimilate and i think a lot of times now yeah. and maybe everybody will think differently but a lot of times now i get like you don't even have an accent saying like how you, you speak so well and you speak very fluently thank yeah. you but it's because i got bullied so bad i genuinely oh, had to learn like i was like it's either i get bullied my whole life or i assimilate and i learn what i need to learn yeah that's exactly how it happened but it took me a while like it's been what 20 years since i've been speaking yeah. english so, oh, shit. so yeah it's been a little bit now are you living paycheck to paycheck or struggling to make ends meet i know it can be super stressful when unexpected expenses come up if that is you don't worry i I got you. Today's sponsor, Dave, can really help you get out of a pinch when you really need it. Dave is a banking app that can help you get up to $500 instantly with extra cash. That's more money to fill your tank, buy a wedding gift, or catch up on bills. You can finally tackle those expenses that have been stressing you out without any hangups. There's no interest and no credit check needed. Millions of people have already downloaded the Dave app to get the financial release they need with extra cash. So if you're in a pinch and need some extra help, download Dave and think of it as a helping hand for the future you. I personally love Dave and I've put so, so many of my friends and family onto this app because you already know gas prices have gone up so, so high. So Dave has really come to the rescue to a lot of my friends and family. Download the Dave app from the app store right now. That's D-A-V-E. Sign up for an extra cash account and get up to $500 instantly. For terms and conditions, go to dave.com slash legal. Instant transfer fees apply Applies. Banking provided by Evolve member FDIC. Remember, future you will thank you. You know, you've been doing social media ya por un poquito de rato. You know yeah. what I mean? Yo pienso que para mucha gente that haven't been following your journey from day one, han de pensar, no, esta muchacha empezó hace dos años en blue up. Yeah. But that's not the case. You no. know what I mean? So you were mentioning earlier that TikTok was that platform that like blew it up for you. Yeah. And if you guys follow her on TikTok, you give a lot of relationship advice. Yes. You know, I mean, entonces, las morritas hasta los morritos hey Stacy qué hago con esto este vato esto este vato esto otro y tú les das advice a todos yes you know you have advice for everyone no sé cómo pero lo tienes how did you start talking about relationships online and was there ever a point you're like okay maybe I did one about relationships it blew up maybe I should do this more often so you're 100 percent right when you say that people probably think that within the last two years is when my career kind of like blew up and i would say it's when the most views have came from all platforms right but i have genuinely felt this way about relationships since a very young age so before i started on social media i remember when i was like younger before i started youtube for real i would be on Snapchat. And you know, like how you would watch stories on Snapchat every day? Yeah. I would literally get on Snapchat once a day and rant about something about relationships and just go off, like to the point where I feel like the people who knew me were probably like, oh my God, this like girl, this like, <laughs> yeah, it's like just skip. But on Snapchat, like you had to be following the person. Yeah. You couldn't just come up on somebody's for you page, right? So when TikTok came around, 
I started like everybody with the dancing videos, day in the life or whatever we were all doing at the time of the pandemic. Little by little, I don't know if it started with one person asking me, what do you think about this? Or what do you think about that? Or if it's something that just was in my heart where I started sharing about relationships and those are the videos that started getting 1 million views, 2 million views. Yeah. Like the most views I've gotten on TikTok is probably like 5 million, yeah. which is insane, yeah. insane. Like on YouTube, on Instagram, you never see that kind Especially of- Especially so fast. Engagement, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so my following started to grow there and I feel like, no por echarme así muchas porras de decir, ay, si soy la mejor, no? Pero I feel like people genuinely seek for advice yeah. because I tend to be very blunt right and so for example a lot of times I think to myself are you coming for advice or are you co coming for encouragement yeah because if you're telling me something like I want to leave my baby daddy because he's cheating 80 times I'm going to tell you to leave him but do you want to hear that or do you want to hear like no girl don't I feel like people come to me when they're ready to be like okay I'm I need somebody yeah. to tell me the truth I mean TikTok I still do relationship videos till this day that's the majority of my content I love it I genuinely feel like it's my life calling, if you will. And it works for me porque me sale muy natural y porque I don't have to really think about it. Like yeah. if you tell me your situation, I'm like, boom, boom, boom. This is what you need to do. Te estoy mirando and I'm like, oh my God, like it's crazy seeing her aquí en persona, you guys. <laughs> and then when you see it on TikTok, it's funny because there's even times when you've talked about relationship stuff or you've given advice que por cualquier cosa nada X conmigo. But then I, I catch myself still be like, me lo pongo aquí because I'm like, maybe in the future I could need yeah. this. But maybe in the future me da ganas de dejar a Daniel la verga. <laughs> and voy a usar su pinche advice. You know, it's crazy because like, Maybe people aren't going through what you're talking about in that exact moment, but it's like stuff that they can be like, oh, shit, I remember hearing something about that. Or like later on when they get in a relationship, it's toxic as fuck. I'm like, oh, me acuerdo que una muchacha hizo un video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Se le cementa la cabeza, you know? Mm -hmm. Was there ever a moment or did you go through a lot of stuff like relationship wise that like has made you get this much knowledge and giving you this much wisdom to give that much advice? So... A lot of times people would be like, oh, you should be a therapist or you should do this or you should do that. And I, I, I have to say it like it's all life knowledge. Lecciones de la vida, literal. So if you guys are not familiar with my story, we actually came to this country, to the United States, because my parents went through a divorce, which was very traumatic. Now, yeah. being a grown up and seeing my parents as people rather than my parents, I see the, di the dynamic that they had and how they were both hurting each other and in the way nos atropellaron a mí y a mis yeah. hermanos which I think it's a, what happens in a lot of relationships right like two broken people trying to make a relationship work and then they have children and then they do their best but at times they don't really know how not to hurt them right yeah. So me and my siblings were collateral damage on my parents' divorce without going into too much detail out of respect for my parents, yeah. especially like my dad doesn't like me to talk about their divorce, but it was really traumatic for me. Like yeah. I saw as the oldest, my mom confided in me a lot of what happened mm -hmm. and I grew up watching her be a take no shit kind of woman. Yeah. So as soon as she found out what my dad was doing behind her back, I'm not even going to talk shit about my mom and say what she did, but let's just say she really went yeah. out, like she went all out, right? I watched that and I think I was at a point in my life where I was mature enough to understand what was happening and be like, okay, life lesson number one, you take no shit from any man, period. Yeah. I genuinely think our parents teach us how to be in relationships because I do also have friends who their mom forgave their dad time and time yeah. and time and time yeah, again. Yeah. And you, you see the cycle repeating itself in mm -hmm. their relationship. When that happened, I kind of took that and, even in my own relationships yeah. and now everybody sees like my happy relationship i got married with an amazing man which gracias a dios he is and a lot of people like on tiktok i get comments that are like you think you're perfect and you think that you can give advice because you've never been through anything or blah 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 but the reality is el diablo sabe más por viejo que por diablo mm -hmm. y por las lecciones que me han pasado that's why i share my knowledge and the things that i did when i was in those certain situations and that's funny that you're bringing up relationships porque pa allá iba you guys pa allá iba you know como dices tú mucha gente online puede puede decir como críticas like mm. oh my god la Stacy dice esto como si fuera tan perfecta o como si su vida dating wise was so perfect was your dating life always that perfect <laughs> or did you have to go trial and error with your dating life to get to where you're at now in you know your marriage well okay so I never talk about my relationships for the same thing out of respect for my yeah. husband. Um, but 
we talked about it and he's like yeah that's fine like you could share you know because it's part of my life yeah. story right so i don't like to make my content about that but since this is you know like we're More talking tar- about yeah, it yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so no, I went through a lot. Yeah. I went through a lot. And like, if we kind of had to do a timeline, I've had three relationships, right? Like three serious relationships. And the first one I would say was one of the big reasons why I am the way that I am now. And like, here's the deal, like as a friend or even like as a quote unquote content creator, I'm really nice. Like I'm yeah. really outgoing. I'm very like, no, lo que tú ocupes, like estoy aquí para ti. Pero como novia y mujer, Fuck no. Like, hell no. Porque yo aprendí muy joven que lo que toleras te van a hacer yeah. toda la pinche vida, literal. So my first relationship, I got into it when I was really young, yeah. right? I was not really young, actually. I was 23. Ya estaba grandecita. <laughs> but I was immature in the way that I hadn't been through a lot of serious yeah. relationships. And so this person was a little bit older than me. And he, and I think this is like a big factor. He was freshly divorced oh, okay. and had two kids, right? So I vengo yo to Pollita, nunca estaba enamorada, and I'm like, oh my god, this is the love of my life. To a person who had already been in love, who yeah. had already had a serious relationship, who, if I kind of saw both of us at the same time, he was probably, and now I can speak this way about him, he was probably hurt trying to mend his broken heart by being with a lot of women. Yeah. And I just was one of those women that ran in his way. In this relationship, I was all hard eyes for him like I love him this is the man that I want to be with and I remember I would tell him I would be like you know even if you don't want to have any more kids because he didn't want to have any more kids I I don't need to have kids as long as I can be with you and I le toleré mucho muchas pendejadas and I remember like he was the kind of man that would like if I was like oh hey babe good morning how are you doing he'd be like bien Oh, what are you doing? Nothing. Así, bien mamón, bien cortante. Obviamente cuando no quieren estar contigo, yeah. but you're in love and you're like, no, he's just Muy having serious, a rough yeah. day. He's just having a rough day at work. Like he, he just doesn't know that I love him this much. Like if I love him enough, eventually he's going to see yeah. and he's going to change. And other ways that I remember, like I remember one time now my husband, for example, like el Denny no come si yo no he comido. Así. Y oh, es, es, es algo tan yeah. mínimo, you know, but I remember this one instance where it, I started to see that this relationship with my first boyfriend, like I was like, I don't think he really loves me because of this one time I was going over his house and I remember I called him and I was like, oh, ya comiste? And he's like, no, no he comido nada. And at the time, like, we were both broke as hell. He was freshly divorced, paying for alimony and child support probably. And I was just like working my little job, having $20 in the bank. And I remember thinking, Voy a, like, I'm going to go to Ralph's and I'm going to get us a rotisserie chicken and some chicken, I mean, and some potato salad. And I'm going to feed us both. Así toda pendejeta, toda enamorada. <laughs> eh, y llego con el pinche pollo and the, chi- and the potato salad. Y el güey comiéndose una pinche pizza I see like just eating his pizza and like the last two slices you guys and I know this may seem like bitch that's what you're crying but a man that loves you will make sure that yeah. you're fed taken care of and you're happy and I remember I just walked in with my little chicken and like my heart broke because I was like he really just he was gonna let me yeah. starve like he couldn't even save me one piece of pizza right and pensando en él, you know pensando, yeah tu dinerito que tenías, el poco dinero que tenías en él, y él yeah ya bien comido. so like I started seeing little things like that where I was like a person who I wouldn't do that to even you yeah. Like if you were like, I'm hungry, I'd be like, you know what? We're going to go eat one, one slice each, yeah. right? And I remember he felt like shit. He's like, oh, I could still eat. And I was like, no, cabrón, ya pa' qué, you yeah. know? Ya para qué. <laughs> and it started off like that. And eventually he would do things like, for example, he was freshly divorced, had kids, right? And I remember it was like Halloween. And I remember he posted a video with his baby. He had a baby that was like two or something his baby and his ex-wife and he's uploaded it to Instagram oh, and was like oh our little minion because they was, dressed up the baby yeah, yeah. as minion tenía novia y subió la foto con la ex-esposa obviamente it seems like they're together yeah. right and I was like what what is this and he was like I am always going to be a family with them so you just have to get used to the fact that they're always going to be around he would always just try not try but he would always make sure that I felt like you this is left. my family and here's you yeah and I would tell him, like, does your ex-wife even know you have a girlfriend? No, para que le tenemos que decir? And I, yeah, and like, red fucking flags, yeah. right? But I just was so young and naive and in love that I just genuinely thought, like, I have to put up with this. Yeah. 
until I was like, well, I don't. Right. And I remember the first time I broke up with him was a Halloween party. And he was like, we were supposed to hang out, give out candy, whatever. And he calls me like last minute. And if there's one thing about me, like I'm punctual, like yeah. well, I'm committed. Right. I'm going to go with my friends to a party so I can hang out with you. Yo, como que you're going to go to a, to your, with your friends to a party, whatever. He ended up going, shut off his phone, ignore me, uploaded Instagram posts with his friends, getting drunk, oh, getting shit. fucked up. And that was the first time I remember with my heart broken being like, this man doesn't love me. Yeah. Like he just does not love me. And I have to get that through my fucking head because if he loved me, he wouldn't disrespect me. He wouldn't eat without me. Yeah. He wouldn't <laughs> like, it's so simple, yeah, but yeah. he wouldn't do these things that just continue to make me feel like I'm just an afterthought on the side. I remember he called me the next morning como si nada. You know what's funny? This day was the first day I had a photo shoot for like a social media thing. Like my yeah. first Instagram oh, thing, shit. right? Yeah, yeah. And I remember I picked up, he called me and he's like, oh, what are you doing? And I was like, now you're calling me? He's like, bien huevudo. He's like, si, pues estoy hablando. Like I'm available now. Like if you don't want to talk, then just tell me. And I remember that was the first time that I was like, no cabrón, ya no me la vuelves a hacer, chinga tu puta madre, ya, ya me arte. And I was like, no, like I don't want to speak to you anymore. You're not going to ruin today for me. Yeah. And and I'm hanging up with you. It's over. Bien huevuda, yo. And you're like, fuck. <laughs> As soon as you hang, you're like, que chingados dice? And like, ni te la puedes creer tú. No lo yeah. creía because since he had just been through a divorce and he was not going to beg me, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. And yeah, dicho y hecho, he didn't beg me. The toxic cycle started of getting back together and breaking up and yeah. getting back together and everything being happy and breaking up and it lasted like that for like two to three years yeah. but that relationship was the reason where it was the first time that I experienced the feeling of it doesn't matter how much I love somebody. I cannot love somebody into loving me. Yeah. And that's the first time I had to get it through my head that if somebody truly loves you, they will do anything and go above and beyond for you. And if they don't, they will show it in the most minuscule ways. And as a person, you have to accept it and be like, es que si no me quiere, no, no matter how pendeja yo me haga por él, yeah. nunca me va a amar. Y si quiero este estilo de vida toda la vida, I have to put up with it. Otherwise, I have to leave. So fast forward years later, después de tanta pinche relación que no sirvió para nada, you meet your husband. ¿Cómo lo conociste? And at what moment tú dijiste, you know what, this man is is the man I've been looking for all this time. Oh my goodness. So shout out to Denny because I love him so much. So before I met Denny, I do have to say I had a couple other relationships and I was like, still trying to heal from that first relationship yeah. porque era ese amor tóxico that you were like, I'm never going to get over this yeah. person. Like I'm just never going to. So I did the online dating thing and o sea, por eso puedo hablar de la manera en la que hablo Porque vi tantas pendejadas online dating You guys, that oh my god I just think to myself It's rough out there for the single people <laughs> So, because I had already been through that relationship That felt so intense and emotional mm -hmm. All those little Tinder dates Or like online dating dates Or people I would meet at the gym or wherever It felt very like not a high, yeah. right? Like it didn't feel like love And it was easy to be like A cualquier pendejada like I don't know. They wouldn't answer me. And I'd be like, okay, anyway, I don't, yeah. I don't want to date you anymore. You know, I feel like that first relationship made me tough enough to be like, I'm not going to put up with anything unless it's love. Mm -hmm. Right. So before I met my husband now, I actually dated, dated, dated. And I feel like I burned myself out from so many failures. Like it was like two months, one month, like dating experiences and i remember before i met denny i was like i'm going on a dick cleanse literal yeah. o sea estoy pinche harta y no matter who i meet like it doesn't feel the same or they're dumb as hell or they're still in love with their ex or they have kids with somebody else which is obviously something yeah. i had a bad experience with so i was like i'm going on a dick cleanse for a year and this was even before i had youtube so if my like my og subscribers yeah, know yeah. about this because i would talk about it on instagram and so i told myself for a whole year i'm not gonna date i'm not gonna talk to anybody like if anybody tries to approach me i'm literally gonna be like no me hables no i cannot talk to you was that tough no bitch i was oh, tired it was easy i'm like damn no it, it was kind of tough okay so yes and no uh -huh. so it was tough in the way that i feel like women and i don't know if anybody else can relate to this but we lead 
into relationships looking for love mm -hmm. rather than wanting intimacy really like yeah, wanting yeah, yeah. sex we I think want the guy's more the one looking for the intimacy yeah yeah, yeah 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 so like as women we want love like we want queremos que nos abracen el apapacho que te digan es que eres el amor de mi vida estás hermosa te amo like I was looking yeah. for that comfort like I really wasn't looking for like sex like I wanted love and I told myself like all of the people that I'm seeing just want sex or they just yeah. want like a quick relationship. Like I want my husband, I want to be married. I want the love of my life. And I need like borrón y cuenta nueva. I need to just not talk to anybody. I need to clear my head. So the first couple yeah. of months were rough because my phone was dry. If anybody was answering or like hitting me up, I was like, I, I had to be strict enough with myself to be like, I'm not going to answer because I know that this person only wants sex. sex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they only want sex. They only want me for my body. They only want me for a good time. And I am tired of that. I don't yeah. want to deal with that anymore. And so I... I took the year off and it got easier with time. Literally, like the first couple of months, it was rough. At the middle, it was like, okay, I feel like I could do this. And at the end, I was like, okay. I did it. I did yeah, it. Yeah, 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 like this was perfect. I gave myself the year. And it wasn't like at the year, I was like, oh my God. Oh, cool, cool. <laughs> o sea, no, it was just more yeah. like. Oh. Yeah, it was more like, okay, like I'm at peace with yeah. my soul and whoever is able to come into this like dynamic, I'm going to be ready. And after that year, I dated a couple of people yeah. and I remember I dated this one guy who he was perfect on paper. Actually, two guys that were perfect on paper. Um, I dated them and like everything was good about them. Like they were handsome. They had everything going for them. They were older. They had like very like good jobs and stuff. And I remember I was able to walk away from them so easily, both of them for different reasons, but because I had taken the time to love myself yeah. and to be like alone and to know that I didn't need anybody, I was able to walk away from perfect men because they didn't fulfill my needs and my heart the way that I needed it. So after those two, like, it was like a month with each, ponle. Um, after I walked away from those two relationships, I almost feel like it was like a test. Yeah. And God was like, okay. Ahora, ya aquí está lista. Es, el tercero sí, del mero. Sí, bueno. aquí está tu esposo. Yeah. Literal. O sea, y al Denny lo conocí sin querer. Literal, I walked into a bar which I don't recommend meeting somebody at the bar, but it just happened that way for me. Uh, I walked into a bar and I saw him and one of my rules was like, I don't approach men because yeah. I don't chase, I attract. And literally he took forever to talk to me, <laughs> but eventually he yeah. came up to me and he talked to me. And I remember I was so sure in my faith in God that I was going to meet the right person that I remember at the end of the night, Danny was like, let me have your number. And I was like, no. And he's oh. like, why not? Y, y me gustaba y este, a, mí se, a mí se me hacía bien buenón y bien guapo y todo. Pero dije yo, no, because if it's meant to be, I'm going to see you again. Oh, shit. Yeah, like I was that sure in my faith that I was like, no, like estoy harta de pinches buenos para nada. Like if it's meant to be, like I was that sure yeah. in myself, you know? Y el Danny me dijo, no te voy a dejar ir hasta que me es tu número. So he told me after the bar closed, he was like, let's go to Norm's and let's go eat. So that way te puedo convencer para que me es tu número. And ya yeah, como a las cinco de la mañana de estar plática y plática y plática le di el número y like desde entonces it's been healthy it's been loving it's been of course full of ups and downs yeah. um but one thing that jenny has that no other man has been able to fulfill in me is the fact that he loves me and respects me above anything else and no matter how hard it's been for us he has always put his best foot forward yeah That's why he's my husband now. Talking about respect, el otro día, pienso que antier o ayer, vi una Instagram story donde alguien dijo, oh, pues tú, básicamente, oh, tú nunca peleas entonces con tu novio. <laughs> What is a healthy fighting, you know, relationship with your partner? So I always, I'm very careful to not over romanticize our relationship yeah. because on social media, it's so easy to see relationships yeah. and be like, they're perfect. They never fight. O sea, son enamorados Disney movie. No. Yeah. O okay. O sea, quiero que entiendan que a huevo peleamos, que a huevo me enojo, que a huevo I get annoyed, both of us, right? So one thing that has helped us a lot, especially 
like me is the fact that I've been in therapy yeah. for years and I don't go to therapy for one traumatic thing that is like oh algo me pasa así empecé yeah. pero ahora ya voy for maintenance right to learn how to be a more patient person to learn how to be a better person a more loving respectful person and so that kind of transfers into our relationship so for example when we fight because we do fight some of the rules and boundaries we have set for our relationship is we don't yell at each other we don't curse oh, yeah. when we're fighting every day <laughs> yeah like we yeah, don't yeah, yeah. we don't curse when we're fighting like i could be here and be like oh my god fucking alan you're so funny yeah. but if estamos peleando i'm not gonna say fucking alan like yeah, hell yeah. no it's a different tone it's a yes. different tone mm -hmm. yes and we don't do that and then what else don't we do but basically we go into arguments with love yeah. right like and don't get me wrong you guys yo soy bien corajuda a veces y a veces when I raise my voice so sometimes I raise my voice porque me desespero and he'll literally be like no me grites yeah y cuando amas and a un, like, oh shit I'm well, breaking one of the rules yeah and I, you don't even think about yeah, that yeah, but yeah. just like cuando amas a un hombre yeah. lo respetas yeah and, and vice versa right cuando un hombre te ama te respeta so con todo el pinche coraje del mundo me está hirviendo la sangre y me dice no me grites más ganas me dan de gritarle but I have to remember that this is the person that I chose yeah. to be with right and so you have to put your best foot forward and work on yourself to not yeah. you know to not disrespect them because the thing about fighting with anybody not yeah. just your partner is that once you cross a certain line you call them a certain thing you say a certain thing or you call them out of their name you can forgive the argument but those words are so yeah. hard to forget yeah. and our relationship is not broken by a big thing our relationship is broken by a strand of little things that eventually just makes the relationship explode yeah cuando uno ya cruza una línea there's no going back no there's no perdón que pueda salvar that line that has been crossed and I feel like that's something que you know hasta yo ahorita ando wow I feel like I'm in therapy right now bitch I'm like wow such great advice <laughs> que hasta yo puedo estar en una relación you know what I mean okay so después de que conociste a tu esposo you know you guys dated y Recientemente se casaron. Yes. And para la gente que no sabe, allá en casita, you guys actually had to speed up, you know, the whole process of getting married. Yes. Um, ¿Por qué fue eso? Oh, my God. So, if, you're, if you guys are not familiar with my content. So, Denny and I got engaged in August of 2021. And we were supposed to get married in August of 2022, right? Now, unfortunately, the beginning of this year was crazy and this is what i mean when i say that you have to have a good partner that's supportive yeah. through these things because so 2020 okay so february of 2022 the beginning of this year my grandma passed away right oh. and it was really hard i love my grandma very much and it makes me emotional to talk about it still and you think or yo pensaba antes que cuando la vida te da un golpe duro you kind of get a break right like yeah. i thought like you kind of get a break like everything settles down again pero a veces no pasa así, a veces la vida te sigue dando putazos, <laughs> literal. Yeah. So a month after my grandma's passing, we get a call, we, I get a call from my sister and she tells me that my dad's in the hospital, in the ICU, and we need to fly out to Alabama, which is where my dad was, because he wasn't going to make it. Now, For those of you that are not familiar with my content, my dad is divorced. He never got remarried. So as the oldest child, I am the first yeah. of kin. So I am responsible for anything that's going to happen to him, for any decision making that has to happen. Two of the toughest weeks of my life. Yeah. And I have talked about it on my channel and I don't even think I can truly emote the emotions that you go through yeah. when somebody who you love so much is losing their life and they're not even conscious to tell yeah. you what they want to do or what you want them to do with their life, yeah. with their body, right? Like I, my sister and I were having to make decisions like, do you want this operation? Do you want this procedure? Do you want us to do a DNR, which means do not resuscitate? Um, what is his medical history? We didn't know any of that yeah. because my dad never wanted to go to the hospital. So we flew out, we were out there for two weeks and this is when an amazing partner comes into play because without hesitation, Denny was taking care of the house, you know, like we have dogs taking care of my job for me, like anything like my Apodaca jewel yeah. orders, like anything. He was like taking care of the back end of things. And after the two weeks, I remember the hospital told us, 
we can't release your dad. Like we're not going to let him go because yeah. he's not okay to go. And we're not going to let him fly. Right. Alabama to LA is 28 hours driving and he wouldn't get clear to fly. And my sister and I fuimos cómplices. Así que, y si lo subimos a un avión, chinga su madre. O sea, lo yeah. tapamos, que no se note que está enfermo. Lo subimos a un avión. Fuck it. You know? And I remember the doctors told us, if you do that and the plane has to land, the airline company could sue you because we didn't give you permission to put a sick yeah. person in the plane. So in ese momento, I called Jenny and I'm like, I don't know what to like. I don't know what to yes, do. Almost, I don't yeah. know what to do. And I was like, I can speak about it right now without crying. But my life was fucking chaos. Like, I don't know. Okay, so I literally didn't get a period for like close to two oh, months yeah. because of, of the stress, stress. Yeah. of the body. And like, for those that don't know, you get a period every month, yeah. right? But my body was under so much stress. I lost weight. Like, hair was falling off. Like, it was crazy. Damn. And so I called Danny and I'm like, what do we do? And he's like, my sister also called her boyfriend and both of them were like, fuck it. Like we'll fly out there and we will drive your dad back from Alabama to LA. LA yeah. It literally took us 36 hours, Damn. nonstop driving. Literal, we got hail, we got rain, we got winds. We crossed the United States with my sick dad in the back of a van girl like i cannot even tell you yeah, like it sounds like a fucking movie and sometimes i can't even believe that it happened to us but when we got back like without getting too much into my dad's personal yeah. history you know my dad wasn't able to do a lot of things for himself and denny without thinking about it alan like i cannot even he emphasize doing it. everything like oh, everything shit, yeah. carrying my dad helping my dad in the bathroom, helping my dad shower. Like, and this is what I mean when I say you want a good partner yeah. because in those moments in life, when life gets fucking tough and when life gets disgustingly ugly, yeah. you want a partner that's like, I know you can't even handle this right now. Let me, yeah. let me take care of it, right? And I tell Danny that, and he's like, I just know everybody would do this. And I'm like, I don't know. Like, I don't think so. I yeah. don't know that you know. Pero para él es muy natural. Para Su corazón él, de yes. oro, literal. Mm -hmm. O sea, es algo de mi esposo que gracias a Dios lo tiene. And I pray my kids get, like his heart yeah. of gold. So we we got back and when we got back everything was chaos and we weren't supposed to get married to august and when we were at the hospital o sea, a nosotros nos decían, tu papá se va a morir mañana. Así. Oh, shit. like in one of the yeah. days they told us like call everybody he loves because he's not gonna make it so with that we told them we're like you know i told denny i was like what do you think if we rush the wedding and we move it and he's like yeah fuck it like let's do it like you yeah. want your parents at your wedding both of your parents i understand it's no problem for me let's do it right and we lit i contacted all the vendors and it's literally god's grace because yeah. everybody was like yes no problem we'll be there like yes like it was just crazy like it was you know, meant to be it yeah. was so meant to be for us to get married on may 4th like because yeah. everything happened effortlessly and we went to go get my dad his tux we went mm. to go give him a haircut um like all those beautiful yeah. moments that i'm so grateful that we got to have y gracias a dios ahorita puedo decir que mi papá todavía está con nosotros he's still here he's getting better he still has a terminal illness so yeah. unfortunately like all of us he will go one day we just don't know when right. um but that's why we had to rush the wedding oh damn that's crazy pero antes de que nos vamos a, a otro topic you know um te deseo que you know to, si, que esté aquí por muchos años Amen. you know what I mean like you said it's a terminal illness un día se va a tener que ir pero que ese día sea muy largo from, from now you know what I mean I've been on a fucking roller coaster this whole interview so antes de que terminemos esta portion del you know de la plática yo pienso que cada persona that's on social media tiene un propósito yes. you know como el mío is more you know para echar you know to make people laugh to entertain people because every single creator online tiene un propósito. Yes. Some greater than others, but todos están igual appreciated, you know? What do you feel as a content creator is your purpose? So I feel like every life has yeah. a purpose. Every single person watching this, every single person who's out there in the world has a life mission. Like I genuinely believe yeah. we come into this world with a life mission. And 
I, I feel like Dios me ha dado este conocimiento y esta manera de hablar and this personality because I genuinely feel like my life mission in this world is to help women feel yeah. Adequate, confident, and full of self-love. Those are the three things I, and I say women, but yeah. in reality, I mean everybody. I just have a soft spot in my heart for women. Number one, because I am a woman and because I come from a family of strong women. Yeah. And a lot of times I feel like as women, we have such huge hearts, such huge nurturing hearts, yeah. right? Like you think of a woman, you think of nurture, mm -hmm. you think of forgiveness, you think of love. And it's my life mission to make sure I do everything in my power to make every woman feel like they can have the relationship of their dreams. Yeah. With my content, I get so many DMs, so many messages of different women asking me things that maybe to you and I are common sense. Yeah. Like, I literally just made a TikTok about this, but three different, I, I'm dating a man with three different kids by three different women, like, and I'm gonna be the fourth. Like, Girls. My girl, that's been the hot dance. Girls. I'm sorry, you know, <laughs> no. yeah. Well, and you know, yeah. like, you think that, right? But some of us come from such messed up emotional yeah. backgrounds that that is their normal yeah. that is mm -hmm. what they expect yeah. their life to be you know or for example a lot of times something that i get all the time is like i want marriage but he doesn't want to be married even though i gave him three kids and oh. and i live with him you know and it's like you deserve everything you want in this yeah. world and there's nothing or anybody that can stop you from getting that the only person in your way is you yeah. and sometimes it is hard to leave good enough for better, right? Like mm -hmm. when it comes to relationships, like you genuinely stay in relationships thinking, this is the best it's gonna get. Yeah. Like this piece of caca ass man <laughs> is the best thing I can do for myself, but I like to be that person online that tells you, you don't have yeah. to stay with him. You don't have to stay with that POS that's treating you like crap, that's te está poniendo cuernos todo el día, that has 18 different baby mamas. Like you don't have to stay with yeah. a man like that. Habiendo tanto hombre bueno y sano, mm -hmm. porque así como le echo tantas porras a las mujeres, I know that there yeah. are beautiful, good hearted men out there, yeah. right? And my dad is an example of one my husband is an example of one like so many dads of yeah. my friends that stayed and created beautiful families yeah. you know they're examples of great men yeah. and a lot of women didn't grow up seeing with that. that example yes. yeah yeah mm -hmm. so they think that they had to stay with an alcoholic man yeah. with an abusive man with a man that that will make him go through everything, yeah. you know? And so my life mission is to let every single woman know that you will get whatever you're willing to settle for. You just sometimes have to push yourself to leave that piece of caca, man. Yeah. Everything's possible. Si tú te lo propones, everything's possible, but it just comes down to like, if you really want it enough. Yeah, yeah. And, and like, and I mean, especially when it comes to relationships, mm -hmm. you know, like we have heard success stories of women who have literally left situations that were impossible to leave like they literally had no money they were being yeah. financially abused they were like like with three kids yeah. and women show us every single day how strong and powerful they are yeah. to be resilient against these situations yeah you know yeah a veces uno piensa que no puedo porque lo amo tanto es que lo amo no puedo vivir sin si sí puedes Sí puedes. ¿Cómo lo hacías antes? Sí, o yeah. sea, sí puedes vivir sin él. Me vale yeah. madre que sea el pinche Prince Williams. Like, you can live mm -hmm. without anybody. And yeah. to circle back to my own relationship, because a lot of times I get ugly comments, like, I can't wait till your husband makes you a mama luchona, pinches cabronas, yeah. you know? Or things like, vas a ver cuando tu esposo te ponga cuerno, or things like that. Yeah. Not because I speak about these things doesn't mean I'm immune to these mm -hmm. things. Every single person is in danger of getting cheated on, of being left, of going through hard things. Yeah. But your faith does not have to lie on, no, he will never cheat on me. Your faith lies, and even if he cheats on me, I will be okay. And mm -hmm. it might take a long time, but I will be okay. And that's what we have to hold on to. Mucha gente online, you know, it's usually the fucking haters que pueden decir a esta pinche morra, like, cuando le pase esto, a ver qué va a decir. But it's Cancelado. crazy. You know what I mean? It's great that you have a mindset like, okay, que me pase. Cancelado. But I know how I'm going to take care of it. Yeah. yeah. And it might be hard as 
Yeah. O sea, hard as hell. Like getting cheated on, being left, being abused, it's not yeah. something, it's no son enchiladas, como yeah, se yeah, llama. Yeah. But you don't put your faith in your partner of because there's somebody else. You can't control yep. somebody else. Mm -hmm. You put your faith in, in yourself. You. Mm -hmm. And that's how you know you can get through anything. And sometimes, even if you think you can't, you have to push through. Ya después de tanta plática, like, I literally felt so inspired, you guys, but it's time, you know, to switch up a little bit, and we're gonna go on to the Wheel of Pendejadas! So, como pueden ver, you guys, Stacy got... Guess the celebrity! So, para ustedes que han visto este programa muchas veces, basically, producción are gonna go ahead and crop out some pictures of really known celebrities, and me and Stacy are gonna try to guess who it is. So, la persona con los más puntos gana. I'm nervous! All right, you guys, so la primera es... Eugenio Mark Derbez. Anthony. No, Mark Anthony. Yes. <laughs> ah, mi Eugenio Derbez, bitch. Carol G. I know. Ah, la bichota. Okay, one, one. Selena. Selena. Who is That's us. Is that yes. Okay, so we us. both get it. Two, two. Bad Damn Bunny. Ah, oh, Bad Bunny. I fucking had it, you guys, in la pinche lengua, pero no me salió. Okay, so te voy three, ganando. Two. Three, two. La, is that the last one? Oh, wait, well, you can tie. Okay, go. Check it out. Yeah? Woo! I was oh going to say God. Selena for some reason. Okay, so did we tie? Yeah, yeah. All right, you guys. So, aquí no hay ni perdedores ni, gan ni ganadores. So, it's a tie. Yeah. Woo! All right, you guys. So, ya después de jugar este juego, como que we're approaching the end of today's episode. Pero antes de que nos vayamos, you guys, I want to go ahead and turn it over to Stacy para que ella nos diga what is next for Stacy. Well, I, if you guys don't know, I am on TikTok. If you want relationship advice, that's where you can find it all. You can scroll for hours, girl, and whatever situation you're in, it's probably already been talked about. I am also on YouTube if you want to know more about my life, about my marriage, about what's been happening with me under Stacy Diaz Apodaca. If you want to watch more of me and my husband, we, are, we also have our vlog channel, which is DNS Vlogs. And if you want to shop my jewelry, line which is called apodaca jewel you go to at apodaca jewel to shop period you guys pues ahí les voy a dejar all her socials linked down below as well right now they're gonna appear on the screen también don't forget to follow me on all my social medias so you guys won't miss any future episodes and with that being said thank you so much for being with us here today and thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you guys in the next episode bye guys <laughs>